What's going on, Jerome's? Happy Friday. Happy Twins Home Opener Day. Woo! It's good times, man. And the Minnesota Fighting Vikings were good times in 2022. Kevin O'Connell, first-year head coach, 13 wins, tied for second most in NFL history, the most in franchise history, won the division, and the offense is looking pretty, pretty, pretty damn good. Justin Brick and Jefferson had a monster season. Uh, Kirk Hewitt, Jerome, Ezekiel Cousins had the best year of his career. And Kevin O'Connell opened up. Uh, to the media, Jeff Howe of The Athletic, about how the Vikings offense, although it was good in 2022, it can certainly get better and more uh, more multidimensional in 2023, uh, as evidenced by some of their rooster mo- moves. And this write-up is from uh, NFLTradeRumors.com. They do a fantastic job over there. Uh, so this is what uh, they wrote. Uh, Vikings head coach Kyle McConnell says he wants to stay consistent with his football philosophies in order to build off their success in 2022. If it's staying true to your football philosophies and what you want to be as a team from a culture standpoint, O'Connell said via Jeff Howe, the athletic, uh, but then it's really taking a, a long look at what made us successful as the 2022 Vikings luck. Nah. Uh, and how do we build on that? I don't know. Get luckier rabbit's foot. Who knows? How do we take the next step? O'Connell thinks the additions of CJ Ham, well, re additions of CJ Ham. Well, I guess you could say he's an addition because they didn't really use him on offense last year. Uh, Josh Oliver uh, from the Ravens will allow them to exploit more defenses with formation versatility, even after losing wide receiver Adam Thielen. Quote uh, I think you've seen that a little bit with some of the moves we've made, either making sure we have CJ Ham as our fullback for the next couple years, bringing in free agent Josh Oliver at tight end, and we'd already traded for. TJ Hawkinson, which might lead one to believe that we might play a little bit more 12 personnel on the field. 12 personnel, one running back, two tight ends, two receivers. Uh, And just to try and dictate a little more with the guys like wide receiver Justin Jefferson and TJ in our offensive line uh, with where we want to go from an improvement standpoint to build on what we did in year one. Uh, I think we got some really good thoughts on how to pull that together in a way that becomes a real positive to build off from last year, but not necessarily changing who we are as an offensive or defensive identity, said O'Connell. And he mentioned the re-signing of C.J. Ham, bringing back Alexander Madison. Dalvin Cook is still hanging around. Uh, uh, Josh Oliver in as a free agent. Brandon Powell, who I I think could contribute nicely as a returner, uh, as well as uh, potentially wide receiver 4-5. or But Oliver is a really big signing. right? So Oliver uh, sort of underutilized in Baltimore. But is a fantastic blocking tight end, both as run blocking and pass blocking. So having Hawkinson and Oliver on the field at the same time, uh, like uh, Kevin O'Connell said, 12 personnel, maybe even 22 personnel, getting heavy out there, keeping defenses in their base defense and base packages, it makes a lot of sense. And then if defenses come out with their base, guess what? You spread things out, you open things up, and Justin Jefferson takes over. Or if they come out nickel, guess what? They're undersized, and then you impose your will running the ball with multiple tight ends. Josh Oliver is basically an additional offensive lineman. Uh, Plus, I think he's very very underrated as a receiver. Remember, he was a third-round pick coming out of San Jose State. Uh, And Bradbury back. I think it signals continuity, uh, as well as you know the Vikings maybe didn't have all that great options in free agency. Note that they haven't brought in any outside uh, offensive linemen, uh, but they did bring back uh, Blake Brandle, who's an ERFA, as well as uh, redoing uh, Chris Reed's deal and then re-signing uh, Schlutman and Ole Udo on top of Garrett Bradbury. So you know, they must like what they see up front, you know, with Chris Cooper and or Scotty, what they're doing uh, with the offensive line. But I, I think that. Whether they keep Dalvin Cook or not, I think that this offense is going to be a lot more multidimensional because they can get heavy. And guess what? Maybe they won't run shotgun on third and short and fourth and short uh, like they did last year, which just infuriates you, man. And plus, it it seemed like the Vikings running game. I mean, Dalvin had a career low 4.4 yards per carry last year. It seems like when they needed yardage, they couldn't get it. And some of that is scheme, some of that's personnel, some of that's play calling, some of that's all of the above, right? But having Oliver out there, I, I think, does bring a new attitude. Plus, you know, even though you lost Thielen, I mean, let, let's be honest here. Thielen, love him to death, but he had lost a step. And one of the reasons why he didn't resign here in Minnesota, went to Carolina uh, and uh, took uh, relatively less money uh, compared to the rest of the free agency group because – Caroline has opportunities, and the number one overall pick is going to be thrown to him. And it was like, who, 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 who's going to take away uh, uh, targets? Like Terrace Marshall Jr., DJ Chark? No, he's not worried about that. Uh, so uh, for the Vikings, I mean, the wide receiver room, 
relatively unproven beyond Jefferson and KJ, but still has potential. Maybe maybe this will be the year for Jalen Rager. Who knows? Uh, the Vikings certainly should and could be in the market for a wide receiver early and often in the draft. Jalen Speedy Naylor, last year's six-round pick from Michigan State, uh, looked good towards the end of the season, uh, especially that Bears game uh, and, and when he and as well as the end of the Packers game. So. I mean, the Vikings can hit you in a number of ways, and I think that uh, formation and personnel versatility is going to be huge where you're not just rolling out the same offense every single week. You're going to be matchup dependent. I think that's what they want to do uh, with personnel flexibility where they can go five wide when they need it. They can go heavy package 22, 20, uh, 12 personnel when they need to. And the re- uh, Hell, they can go t- uh, 13 personnel if they want to. I'm Johnny Munt, Ben Ellison. Get, at, get after it, man. But... I, I like where they're headed. I think overall, I mean, they shed some of the some veteran contracts like Kendricks and, and uh, Adam Thielen, but I, I like what Kevin O'Connell said. I think that there's going to be a toughness and a physicality up front that they're going to stress that wasn't necessarily there at times last year, and they're just going to get after it. So I, I think that there's going to be a lot more of these moments uh, in 2023, and I think it's only going to benefit Kirk Cousins. I think it's only going to benefit Justin Frank and Jefferson, and hell, you know, the coup de grace, uh, of course, would be adding the quarterback of the future in the draft, TBD, who that's going to be. But we'll see. But your thoughts are thoughts. Kevin O'Connell uh, spoke with The Athletic about 2023 offensive philosophy. Let us know your thoughts and our thoughts in the comment section below. Subscribe for daily Vikings takes. Once more the work, put a little something in the Venmo. But to next time, Skull Production Value.